a turn on 7th Avenue to ease traffic congestion. A second suggestion was the area surrounding the bridge, which is 92nd Street, is highly congested. And so there shouldn't even be a consideration of putting in any bike lanes in the 92nd Street area. We also talked about cyclists should be able to use the Shore Parkway Greenway and then connect with the routes through the Shore Park Greenway to continue their um, bicycling. We talked about the 72nd Street footbridge is a good place to do a crossover from Bay Ridge to Diver Heights. Another item we had on our list was to support uh, bicycle education programs in the neighborhood. And the last thing we have on our list is to support signage for making connections to the existing network, as well as have, giving my, uh, people access to the bike network on their phones through digital process. We're going to be driving our bikes like on our phones. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Regina. I'm a spokesperson for the table here. Um, okay, so uh, our group identified the need for both north, south, and east, west bike lanes. Um, we identified Fourth Avenue as a critical route for bikers, both inside Bay Ridge and. Um, um, we identified Bridge Boulevard, turning into Second Avenue uh, north of Bay Ridge as a critical road for a bike lane, especially for those of us who bike with our children. Uh, Bay Ridge Parkway, as you marked here, has a great <laughs> opportunity to do an east-west route. Um, we all uh, noted the importance of the Shore Road Parkway and the, the need to add safer exit points and connectors off of Shore Road. Um, a top priority for our group was a safe bike route to the Sunset Park Ferry Terminal. Um, we have recognized the need for much more intense traffic enforcement so that drivers of all types, including bikers, uh, are more safe. Speeding, we recognize as a, as a real danger to everyone in the community. Um, and finally, we'd like to see bike parking um, throughout, near our schools, near our restaurants, near our shops, near our parks, near our subways. Okay. Um, so in our group, we had a good mix of uh, bikers, drivers, people using public transits, walkers. We had a good mix of people that were living in the neighborhood, and I personally live outside the neighborhood, but come into the neighborhood a lot uh, for restaurants, things like that. Um, so destinations that we would like to go to are the ferries, Industry City, uh, people who work in the neighborhood, some people work outside the neighborhood, so um, everyone wanted a, a safe bike routes uh, all around. The areas that we identified where uh, we would benefit is 4th Avenue, I heard a lot of clapping for that, so I think we would agree with that. Uh, same thing, Bay Ridge Parkway, uh, coming down to here where I live, so I'm not going to get a lot more about the park. I was going today, because I couldn't figure out how to get here safe now. You know, my friend Josh here going, how to get here, right? Um, I would have probably had to ride along the Shore Parkway, but one of the things about Shore Parkway we talk about is parking maintenance, right? Mongols and everything, I didn't want to ride that tonight. Um, let's see what else we had. Uh, 86th Street, we talked exclusively about 86th Street, what the gap was and what's not, you know, ideal for, for um, bike lanes. 
little bit of mixed emotion, right? Uh, it would be a nice corridor, right? We all live you know, up and down this corridor, we all know that there's a lot of business, a lot of traffic, so that study probably has to happen. I think that, that's something that's um, of interest. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, from that meeting? <coughs> Oh, bike racks, yeah, so we, we identified a lot of bike rack areas um, where transportation is a lot of the ferry, um, probably the movie theater that's on Fifth Avenue, things like that, where people can congregate and go to. Uh, we talk about schools needing bike racks, um, playgrounds, and things like that, right? So personally, right, if my daughter's going to high school next year for Hamilton, we have got a diaper, trying to figure out how to get her from here to there as an alternate, right? She can take the bus, but taking a bike would be really nice to go on shore. And Bike safely. Um, let me see. Uh, we did talk about traffic, a lot of enforcement, right? It's a big challenge, right? So there's more enforcement. So also, right? Um, then if we call it by some sort of wall or some sort of guidance, um, we don't have here and things like that. So I think that those are some of the things. We talked a lot about some of these uh, streets here in Bay Ridge that they're narrow and everything, but we do need some connections to you know, from here up to Fourth Avenue and probably up into the um, Central Park area. So we talked a lot about uh, what, is, you know, what is ideal for, for some of the shared bike lanes. Uh, not good for bikes, as Fifth Avenue uh, listed. Potentially maybe for the business and the third access to business. A lot of the parking and enforcement may, may help out, but we thought that was going to impact some of the um, some of the uh, slow guy. Uh, that's about it. So over here, so one of the things that we talked about um, was Obviously, you know, we're in Bay Ridge, we have a lot of people who move Bay Ridge um, at the table. We've got a density of things that we wanted to talk about in, you know, in the neighborhood and also next door in Dagger Heights, but we also had talked a little bit about, um, yeah, there's, you know, we've got some things marked out on the map all the way through Bensonhurst and now points beyond, and we talked about, you know, the points up in Sunset Park and North of Mad that you know, there is an interest of being able to go beyond the borders of the community district to be able to, um, to, to bike to places in this way. Um, yeah, okay, that, that made a lot of sense. That was smooth. But uh, um, in terms, in specifically in the context of what kind of bike infrastructure that we'd like and where the placement would be, we talked a bit about having it on the streets where there is room to put all the all the uh, road users that you know, have lanes for car travel, car parking, uh, and um, bike travel, and looking, taking a fresh look at the streets that are wide enough to accommodate that. So in terms of north-south, looking at a 4th Avenue, uh, looking at a 4th Avenue. <laughs> East West Corridor is looking at uh, a Bay Ridge Parkway as well. Um, but beyond the context of you know those kinds of um, uh, that kind of bike infrastructure, we'd also talked a bit about the fact that you know, in a way it also tends to be a little bit inadequate from the standpoint that if you're looking towards expanding cycling and you're gonna put in a protected uh, bike path that is still it has a fixed width. Uh, there's going to be issues in terms of maintenance, particularly during the winter, and wanting to make sure that generally the, the entire neighborhood environment uh, is, um, is friendly and safe in walking and cycling. And just wanting to be able to get outside the box a little bit in terms of just you know, going beyond you know, bike lanes and protected bike paths and, and just looking at the general environment for cycling overall. So is there a little bit of a discussion about uh, education programs, uh, and particularly, you know, the you know, pedestrian safety, you know, a lot of the, uh, the corners that we've marked up uh, in terms of being unsafe, you know, it's just, you know, it's, you know, a madhouse trying to get across on foot as well as uh, trying to get across by bike. <laughs> Oh.
transferred down to the next level. Uh, in, in, as Bay Ridge residents, we said there, there are areas, 3rd Avenue, 5th Avenue, 86th Street, Bay Ridge Avenue, and 91st, 92nd Street are very heavy commercial areas, and that impedes driving, so walking is preferred, but it also encourages people to use um, to, um, Uber and other, uh, to, um, like that, like car services, so it doesn't really reduce traffic, it's just different traffic. And we recommend um, east-west routes along 83rd Street from Shore Road through the Dunker Heights and wherever you want to go after that. And come, we're turning on 68th Street, uh, coming west. Um, that will bring you over the highway and hook up uh, with the Greenway Connector. Those are our major points. Thank you. Most of you guys uh, made some great points, and on behalf of the team, we want to thank you all for, for coming to me as well. Uh, but we, uh, we, we, we're going to go over some of the things that you guys have mentioned. Uh, McKinley Park, a lot of uh, a lot of free space there. There's illegal commercial parking uh, around the park, which kind of messes up the uh, bike lanes. The 78th Street and 7th Avenue, Fort Allen Parkway exit on the Gowanus, that also causes a nightmare of traffic preventing bike lanes from actually going through that intersection. And also Bath Avenue, down here, there is a bike lane there and it just stops. So we gotta figure that out. There's no, it just doesn't continue because we need to be buying that. Uh, bike connections, we also identify Bayridge Parkway, which we feel might be good, all the way up to Stowell. That's what we said. Um, east of B3 on 86th Street, so 86th Street just going along uh, B2E, uh, which we are, I believe we are getting a bike lane up to 3rd Avenue, we think we can continue on. Um, uh, what else, 7th Avenue, 7th Avenue is really a quiet level block, uh, uh, avenue, we feel we have a dedicated bike lane going Protected. All along uh, set that coming down the way, so coming all the way down here. And it could be actually a double double dedicated bike lane. Um, and you could take anything from there, it's, it's, you feel it's quite safe. So uh, that's what we said. Thank you all for <laughs> no, our man doesn't have much on it. Um, we had a very frank discussion where it makes of uh, bike enthusiasts, riders, commuters, and park users as well. And so it was very hard for us. Uh, and, and, but I think it was also very valuable to have a short discussion because there were so many concerns we all have about having the road safer, and that was definitely a theme. Um, I did want to say the, the big breakdown seems to be about Fourth Avenue, not having any hand in that. And because there's obviously a concern that Fort Avenue is a major road for progress, just as far as needed for access to the bridges and things like that, and the best thing should seem to break down is important. At the same time, how do we make that road to safe and regular cross and just the dead streets? And then how do we make the flow of the traffic work? So that was a lot of discussion about the narrow road, keep it safe, all that stuff. There were suggestions of maybe looking more at 7th Avenue or 6th Avenue because they could see more the streets as uh, a better alternative in that case. And so that was like, but we had a really good discussion about like the big issue also is enforcing the laws. There's just a problem on so many of the sides, the cell phones and how people use them as they buy, walk, and drive, uh, speed 
on the roads, electric bikes, masks, and stickers, and so on and so on. It's even more enforcing the traffic laws. Um, this is a good thing. So the roads are just safer. And I think that's an area we're really going to all focus on. Even if we disagree on how the road is used and otherwise, at least traffic enforcement laws should be followed. And education comes with that. Right? And that's a big feature that I think we should all be going to talk about that. Um, and then, oh, there was a talk about doing traffic surveys on 4th, 6th, and 7th, and really see how they were used effectively so we better data. I think that was something we all want to have a better understanding of actually how those would be have some concrete to be used to make some decisions on. For a lot of this, it's just impressions of what we see, but that may not be enough to really have the accurate assessment because I think there's conflicting views on how it's being used. So that information, I think, is safe. Okay, thank you everyone. Uh, I hope you all got something out of this workshop. Or I think everyone should give themselves a round of applause for, for working on this. Have a nice night. Thank you. We're going to get all this information together and uh, we'll be back in the spring to show you. Thank you everyone for coming today to participating. This was great.